One of the biggest developments in wheel technology in recent years is the advent of hookless rims. They can also be a source of much confusion though. What tyres can you use? Are they always safe? In this video, we will explain firstly what they are, also why they exist, and also tell you what you need to know to be able to choose tyres for them. And I think most importantly, we'll also explain the reasons why. And we've been talking to our friends at Zip and Pirelli to get you the right answers. Traditionally, the inside of the sidewall of a rim has a little bulge at the top of it called the bead hook. And it was created in order to be able to hold lightweight, flexible road tyres securely onto the rim when inflated to high pressures. Now, with hookless rims, very simply, you get rid of that bulge, the hook, and it's tech that first came onto bikes via mountain bikes about seven years ago, and it came through automobiles, so cars and motorbikes. And very gradually, it's moved over to gravel and road. Why go hookless? Well, there are several reasons. Firstly, it allows manufacturers to change their construction technique, which can then potentially give a stronger and quite significantly lighter wheel. So as an example, the Zip 303 Firecrest are 300 grams lighter for the pair than their predecessors. And that's not all down to hookless technology, but a significant amount of it is. And that's because as it's made, the carbon needs to be compressed. Now, normally, we're with a traditional hooked rim, you have to use a soft silicon mandrel to mold the rim bed and the inside of the sidewalls. But when you remove the hook, you don't have to squeeze the mold back out again. So you can use a metal mold instead, which is far more effective. It gives much better compression, more consistent compression. And that therefore then allows Zip to use less material and get a wheel that's the same strength. Now it's also a simpler process too, and there's less waste at the end of it. So manufacturing costs can be reduced. Brilliantly, this is something that seems to have been passed on to us, the consumer, because as well as being 300 grams lighter, these are also significantly more affordable as well. And finally, from a performance perspective, using a hookless rim allows a smoother transition from tire to rim. So the whole package can also be more aerodynamic as well. So they are cheaper, lighter, and more aero. The performance benefits seem fairly unequivocal but there is still this misinformation about safety. So let's dive into that next. Back in the day, as we heard, hooks existed in order to hold tires securely onto the rim. So how can you safely remove them then? Seems like a fairly fundamental question to ask. The answer is tire technology. A lot has happened in the 50 years since bead hooks were created. And actually a lot of it has happened fairly recently with the advent of tubeless. Now, the golden rule is that you have to use a tubeless tire on a hookless rim. You don't have to run it tubeless, you could stick it in a tube in if you want, but you need a tubeless ready tire because of the bead of the tire. So that's the bit that sits inside the rim. Now, it's different to a normal clincher tire because it does not stretch when it's inflated. So the rest of the tire can be nice and supple, but the bead needs to be really, really resistant to stretch. And it also needs to be manufactured to much tighter tolerances. So that means that when you seat the tire on the rim, it's already airtight and it stays that way even as you inflate it to higher pressures. Early adopters of tubeless will still remember, I'm sure, burping tires. And that was a result of imperfect tolerances and potentially slightly stretched beads. The rims too can also be manufactured to super tight tolerances. Zips say that theirs are plus or minus 0.1 millimeters, which is really important because it means that not only can you set up your tubeless tires easily, you can also be confident that they are safe. Now, this tolerance point cannot be overstated, in part because last year the industry took a big step forward thanks to the ETRTO, which is a very exciting acronym that stands for the European Tire and Rim Organization, which exists to specify and harmonize the sizes of rims and their associated pneumatic tires. Not a fact you ever thought you needed to know, but it's really important. 
Firstly, they moved to ratify hookless technology for gravel and road bikes. Previously, it was just for mountain bikes, but ETRTO say that it is good to go. Secondly, and I think more importantly, they have also specified the exact tolerances that manufacturers need to work towards, specifically the bead seat diameter, which is a measurement of the inside of the rim bed on one side of the rim to the inside of the rim bed on the other side of the rim. And that measurement is absolutely crucial to tubeless because it means that you will be able to fit the tire and then inflate the tire and then for it to hold air as well and from a safety perspective it's also absolutely critical as well because a rim that's too small or a tire that's too loose is going to give you problems now though thanks to ETRTO there is no ambiguity the bead seat diameter needs to be 621.95 millimeters plus or minus half a mil Lastly, they've also slapped a max tire pressure on hookless technology of 72 and a half PSI or five bar, which to a lot of road riders is gonna sound pretty low. Hence, I guess, more confusion on the whole safety issue. So when I put that to zip, they said, firstly, they tested 18 different tires from different manufacturers on their new hookless rims. And they were able to inflate them to between 150 and 200 PSI before they failed. So there's clearly a huge safety buffer built in there. But then when I pressed them further on this conservative figure from ETRTO, they said actually they felt it was helpful in guiding consumers to their optimal tire pressure. Because in their research, and its research has been backed up by studies around the world, it shows that actually for road riders, the optimal tire pressure tends to be significantly Definitely lower than 72 and a half PSI, unless you're going to be rattling around on a velodrome, basically. And lastly, on this topic of super nerdery and tolerances, the ISO, so that's the International Organization for Standardization, haven't yet ruled on hookless tubers technology, but it is apparently imminent. And that's because a cross-party group from within the bike industry have been working together on this, which is really cool. And it's not something that we often hear of as consumers. I think we tend to think that the industry is pulling in different directions, but no, not here, not with hookless tubers tech. So why do, after all of that, some manufacturers still not allow their tires to be used on hookless rims? Or conversely, some wheel manufacturers not allow their wheels to be used with certain tires. Well, in some cases, it comes down to a lack of information, a lack of testing. So they're like an unknown quantity. And at this point, I reached out to our partners at Pirelli to see what steps they had gone through before allowing their tubeless tires to be used on hookless rims. And they have done a lot of testing, both inside statically and dynamically on steel rims and commercially available rims and then also outside as well both in a controlled way so using a trailer towed behind a car which is something i quite want to see but then also putting in a ton of kilometers covered in all sorts of measuring instruments so ultimately it means that they are confident in their product and that it can be used on hookless rims as long as importantly the rims adhere to etrto standards as well and that the user you and i don't inflate them above that five bar limit although important to note actually pirelli just like zip have tested them far in excess of those etrto pressures as well so in cases where a tire doesn't work, it might be that the manufacturer has not done enough testing, so they don't feel confident in their product. It might be that they're not manufacturing to those ETRTO standards or to tight enough tolerances. It might be that the bead itself isn't quite up to standards, so, so the shape and the dimensions of it might not be quite right, or indeed it might not be quite resistant enough to stretching. What it doesn't mean though, is that a tire that's not compatible is a bad tire because actually it might be a really good tire just on hooked rims and just fundamentally that the technology hasn't been updated yet in order to suit the demands of hookless rims. If you are in any doubt, just check with the manufacturers of your wheels and also your tires that they conform to those ETRTO standards. And if they do, you can also rest easy in the knowledge that tubeless setup is also likely to be a breeze as well. 
Now, the other point to mention is that if you are tempted by hookless, because of those new ETRTO standards, you're also likely to be future-proofed as well, because more and more manufacturers, almost undoubtedly, are gonna be following suit with this as well. Now, you might not be tempted by going tubeless, and that's fine, hooked rims and clincher tires are still great. But there are performance advantages to going hookless as well as economic ones, and there are performance advantages to going tubeless as well. So if you are tempted, and I don't blame you if you are, then just don't be scared of it. Just do your homework, but don't be scared. Now, if you have any questions, do stick them in the comments section down below. I imagine there might be a little bit of debate as well, so I'm gonna read that with interest. I would also like to give a quick shout out to Zip and Pirelli, say thank you very much for, uh, for their insight and their help in making this video. Uh, and also, the last thing to say as well is please give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.